Hey folks, I'm a PM on Teams Toolkit, and I've been doing a series each week pretty much on Teams Toolkit to do kind of introduction to each of the tools that we have and some of the different scenarios and just kind of introduce you to how to use them. And so this is kind of a look at where I was uh, past couple of weeks, did an intro, we talked about VS Code, we talked about Visual Studio, so, and today I'm going to show you the Teams App CLI, which is also included as part of Teams Toolkit. And uh, how do you advance PowerPoint? There we go. Uh, just a quick recap on what Teams Toolkit is. If you missed it or maybe you haven't heard of it, uh, it's a collection of project templates, samples, documentation, and then we have some developer tools in VS and VS Code as extensions that give you a composable task runner so as to automate a lot of setup for building apps for Teams or M365. Um, you also get a way to do groupable configuration sets. So this is what we call environments. So you can do things like dev, test, prod, et cetera. Um, we have infrastructure templates for you to host these on Bicep if you want to do that. We also have a simulator-like tool for testing Teams apps called the Teams app test tool. And then we also have a design time previewer. That's a separate extension. It's called the adaptive card previewer. So the cool thing about that is it's the exact same rendering stack that Teams use for adaptive cards. It's the only tool that has that right now. So it's a good way to kind of do design time testing of your adaptive cards. And we also have templates for GitHub workflows, Azure DevOps, help you get started. And then the, I think the next session I'm going to do in this series is to show you how to uh, use those. So if you're interested in that, you can take a look at that. And then we also have support for creating dev tu tunnels automatically um, when you use the extensions. All right, that's enough of that. Let me jump into my good old friend, the terminal. I will show you how to use the Teams app CLI. And I'm going to bear with me. I'm going to try to do things live. Um, I think it will be OK, though. Uh, the Teams app CLI is an NPM package, so it is a node stack tool so if you don't like that i'm sorry that's what it is so install node and then you can npm install teams app cli and then you will have um i think teams app cli so there's a bunch of commands in here and this gives you a way to basically get started you don't need to use our vs code extension you don't need to use visual studio if you have um you know your own preferences or you just like working in the terminal there's a lot you can do um to use teams toolkit right from the cli so we have scaffolding support for our node friends in this CLI, so you can do Teams app. Actually, let me clear this. Quick way to get started. Teams app new, and if you've used the Visual Studio code extension, then this is very similar to that. The flow and everything is the same, um, same templates. Um, if you haven't, then uh, then this will be interesting for you. Um, we have a bunch of scaffolding options for different project templates to get started with uh, Teams apps and agents. Um, and I'm just going to choose a simple one uh, because I'm scared that things will break in front of you and I'll be embarrassed. So I'm going to choose a basic bot. Also, I don't want to put my Azure keys on here because I'll forget to delete them. So I'm just going to choose a basic bot and some of these templates um, support JavaScript and TypeScript, and then a lot of the agent stuff and the AI projects also support Python. So uh, thanks, Bill. Uh, so JavaScript, and we'll just go ahead and do that, and then we'll be super original here. And I've made so many of these, hopefully that doesn't conflict. All right, so now the project is created. So I'm just gonna go into that. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Should be good. And I prefer to use code, so I'm just going to open this in code to make it simpler for you to see what is going on here. And here's the project template, and we'll just continue in the terminal. And to get this started, um, we can use the automation and kind of configurable task runner that TeamSquad has. That's what these YAML files are. And the first step is to provision this, and I'm going to do it for the local environment. So by default, we have a local environment and a dev environment and i believe that this will throw an error and i think it's useful to show you what that error is because you'll probably hit it because i often forget to do this and we'll see here so what this is going to do is go through all the steps in this yaml file to create a teams app which is something we need um, we want to debug this easily so we're going to create an enter id app for the bot and we're going to register it with bot framework which is what's going on here 
And then we do some other things like validating the app manifest and uploading the package to the team's developer portal. And we hit can, a problem. Can it, John, can it, John, one step uh, zoom a bit? Yeah, yeah, sorry. yeah. I knew you were going to say that. Thank you for the reminder. <laughs> thank you, thank you. No thank worries. You. Yeah, let me know if you can't see. All right, so like I said, there's going to be a problem here. What's happening is if we look up here on this bot framework thing, one of the inputs for that is the messaging endpoint. So this says uh, bot framework wants to know how to communicate with my locally running bot, and it wants this environment variable bot endpoint. Uh, that isn't set, and nothing in the CLI or this file creates that. So it's complaining that, hey, you need to have this variable set, or I'm not able to provision this correctly because it's an input. So that's in here. You can see bot endpoint and bot domain are empty. So since we're using the CLI, we need some way to create a developer tunnel and for us to uh, expose this locally running thing for bot framework to communicate. Normally, the Visual Studio code and the VS extensions will automate this for you with our dev tunnel support. But since we're not using that, we're using it in terminal, uh, we'll have to do that ourselves. So you can either use the dev tunnel CLI if you want and create that. You can use, um, what's that other tool, NGROC or NGROC, I don't know how to say it, but whatever that tool is, you can use that. Um, or what I like to do very easily is just use VS code. So. This is the default port. So I'll go ahead and open that up. And for bot framework things, this does need to be public. So I'll go ahead and do that. And I'll just copy this. And I hit the wrong button. I'm still hitting the wrong button, sorry. There we go. And I think I just need to put the domain in here. I don't. Think there's anything else once that's looks good okay so now we have our tunnel url that's all set up get rid of that go back to this and we can rerun that command now our input for that step to configure bot framework will be done so this automates the messaging endpoint in the uh, bot framework uh, registration which in the past you'd have to go to either your azure bot service or the bot framework portal and you'd have to update that messaging endpoint to point to your thing um Anytime that your code changed or, you know, anytime you change your NGROC URL or whatever, uh, but you the tools automate that. So now that's running. Uh, we just need to run uh, deploy now. So the YAML file has another lifecycle step to separate out what deploy does. And then I think for, this is just going to run basically npm install for us. And it's going to create an environment file for our runtime uh, with some stuff that we need to configure the bot framework SDK. So we can look at that right here. So it's creating a credentials using this config class, which uh, is, where is that? Right here. So it's just using environment variables. That's why we need it in the runtime. OK, so that's done. And now that what we can see is we have our app package. So here's my app package. And the YAML file had an action to do that. So. Anytime you're confused about what toolkit is doing, go into the YAML file and it will tell you it's it just kind of a script that has all the automation tasks. We can see here's one right here, zip an app package and put it in that directory for that environment. So that's where that came from. Now we can get this thing running in Teams. Let's go to Teams and we're just going to upload that package. And here's that project, here's that package. I'm just going to sideload it so I can test it. And I almost forgot a step because I'm not used to doing this. We do need to actually run this app. It's not, the node app is not actually running. So that is my command npm run dev teams fx. So that's part of the template. Now that is running. And hopefully I didn't forget anything else. We'll find out in a second. So we say hi to this bot, we should just echo it. Hopefully, just wait for that. Cool, all right, so I didn't forget anything. So there, it's working. So there's our bot, um, there's our log message we're running with the message activity. So that is basically how you can use the Teams app CLI. And you can create a project, um, you can set up tunnels however you want. Uh, Dev Tunnels is, has a CLI tool that you can use, or you can use VS Code to kind of make that Fancy if you prefer. Um, and that's pretty much it. You can run all the other commands uh, to 
execute the lifecycle steps in this to run with the YAML files, and you're pretty much off to the races. So you don't, and then if you aren't familiar with it, um, what I covered the last couple of times, we also have the Teams app or the Teams toolkit uh, extensions. So they work with these projects and they have UI and, and VS Code features to do all of those same things, including like your accounts and handling those environments. So whichever you prefer, but they're interchangeable. So you can use whichever one you want. Any questions? Um, I think I have one slide to show you. So here you go. Uh, if you want to get started, ak.ms slash TTK. And join me next time and I'll show you how you can use this. And this is what a lot of folks are using in their CI CD workflows to work with these projects. So they can dev with the dev tools in VS Code or VS and then push changes and actually automate some of these steps um, to get them into teams and to publish them, et cetera, uh, using the CLI. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.